Hello everyone and welcome back to another MAC chess game by Paul Morphy against Charles Morion, his close friend from 1869 from New Orleans. Let's see what happened in this chess game without wasting too much time. So as you know, Paul Morphy surrenders his knight against Charles Morion. So this is a knighthood scheme. Morphy starts the game with e4, e5, f4 and this is the king's gambit. E takes on f4, knight to f3, g5, bishop to c4, and bishop to g7, c3 by Morphy, h6, queen to b3 by Paul Morphy, the first big threat attacking on f7. So what else? Defending with the queen, and then also it looks like this is attacking the e pawn, but Morphy pushed the pawn, d4, d6 by Charles Morion. Well, in this position, I think if capturing the pawn, white can move the king, and rook to e1 is looking very unpleasant. And also attacking on f7. So it looks like capturing the e pawn is only going to help white, not black. So d4 by Paul Morphy, d6, and Morphy castled. Again, if capturing the pawn, then rook to e1 wins the queen. So c6, the king is still in the center, that doesn't look very good for Charles Marion, as always Morphy is ahead in the development and Marion is behind in the development. Bishop to d2, developing the bishop, but Morphy pushed the pawn, if capturing the pawn then capturing back with the e pawn, that will still open the e file and rook to e1 is coming, so bishop goes uh, to g4, e5 by Paul Morphy, he follows the traditional way, he is pushing the pawn because the king is at the center. So c takes on d5, and then bishop takes on d5, attacking on b7. So de developing the knight and defending like this, e takes on d6, and queen to d7 by Charles Morion, not capturing the pawn, because I think if capturing the pawn, again, this is only going to help white, because this is not defending on f7, and leaving on b7. So if capturing on b7, also attacking the rook and the knight, that doesn't look very good. So this is why we have e takes on d6 and queen to d7, defending everything with the queen. Check, king over, and knight in. Well, in this position, Marian couldn't resist it, the temptation. He captured the knight and then capturing back with the bishop and getting the pawn. And after moving the king, bishop goes back and attacking on d6. But actually, this move has a downside. Can you see the downside? What would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? Actually, in this position, white has a very simple but a very strong move. Can you see that move? The move is queen to c3, double threat, attacking the bishop and also the rook, but Marion captured on d6, also attacking the bishop, Morphy leaves the bishop for the rook, queen takes on d5, and in this position, believe it or not, but actually, black is up material, black has the material advantage, but white has the positional advantage, so Morphy prefers the position, Morphy is going after the king, and in this position, actually, white has a very strong move, so basically, black has two pieces, two minor pieces for the exchange, and also black has two extra pawns, but again, like I said, positionally white is winning, and white has a very strong move, basically white has some sort of forced win in this position, can you see the next move for Paul Morphy? Paul Morphy played the strongest move, what would you do? Well, that is very simple, bishop to c3 and threatening checkmate, queen to g7, because the escape square, escape file is being occupied by the rook, so blocking with the bishop, blocking the rook, and it is white to move. Well, Paul Morphy sacrificed the exchange, rook takes on e3 for opening the file, and now did you see the move, is it check, like this? Actually, this is much better, bishop to b4, check deflecting the king, separating, and then capturing the knight, everything is falling apart, 
who rook takes on f7, king, go king goes down, king to c6, and now what would you do? This is very important. Uh, not every move is winning, but there is a very strong winning move in this position for white. Well, let me show you uh, what didn't happen in the real chess game. If capturing the rook, that would be the blunder of a chess petzer. <laughs> because of queen to d1. Of course, there is back rank problem. Check. Checkmate. <laughs> so, of course, that would be the blunder of a chess petzer. And it would be very funny, of course. But Paul Morphy was not a chess petzer. He was not a chess petzer. Bobby Fischer once said, perhaps the most accurate chess player ever. So in this position, he, what would you do? Basically, white played the move and black resigned. The move is Rook to c7, a stunning sacrifice by Paul Morphy, a stunning, beautiful deflection tactic by Morphy. Well, Marianne resigned because of this continuation, capturing the Rook, losing the queen, deflecting the king and losing the queen. White has the bishop and the queen against the rook and the bishop, threatening check, capturing the bishop. This is also losing positionally and materially. So this is why Charles Morian resigned after rook to c7 at move 25. And thank you very much for watching. Maybe we can say that Paul Morphy was at least few hundred points higher rated than his closest friend Charles Morian. Again, uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.